I was quite shocked to be nominated in the first place. Um, but we have been working um, on a range of different issues across the Fire and Rescue Service, from maternity pay and policy through to facilities and fire kit. My, my job is to make sure that women know that I'm here, that the women know that they can bring issues to me and that hopefully me with the help of the section and the rest of my union colleagues that we can help to work with the service to resolve it and make things better. In my time I think we're, we're starting to see a bit of an improvement in the facilities that we have on stations. When I first got involved was a real fight, you know, trying to improve the dignified facilities. I chose to nominate Sona, Kerry and Rachel for this Equalities Award because of the work they've done within the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to drive forward the much needed change within the service. Siona um, had a period where she was the Executive Council member and she drove change within our organisation through the anti-sexual harassment working group that the FBU established. That's led to a far-reaching, inward-looking report that the Fire Brigade Union recognise just how big a problem sexual harassment is within union spaces. So we applied to the Fair Work Leadership and Equality Programme through the STUC and the outcome of that was that we managed to secure a three session um, training day on anti-sexual harassment because we are not immune to the fire, in the fire service to misogyny, sexual harassment or, and sexism and that's been evidenced recently within reports that have come out. And the all felt from that, it gave them the confidence to challenge these behaviours which are unacceptable in any organisation. We've also done work on menopause guidance and the experience of women and educating both women and men, everyone on what that means and how we can support each other in, in any job really, but obviously predominantly the fire service when um, experiencing menopause symptoms. It's really important that fire services recognise how difficult it is for women in the fire service. So for example, we are in the middle of a campaign called the Fight for 52, where we are campaigning, women are demanding campaigning for 52 weeks maternity pay for operational firefighters. We work very much as a team, although I, I lead the women's section at a regional level within Scotland, Rachel and Kerry are pivotal in all the work that we do with the service. I'm really pleased that we're being recognised as a section um, because I think the work we're doing is not easy and um, we couldn't do it without each other. I'd like to say to Siona and Rachel, you know, thanks for bringing me into the FBU. It was them that encouraged me to take on the role. They've totally opened up my eyes to the bigger picture and they're my sisters and I just absolutely love working with them and I love the changes that we're making in the Fire and Rescue Service. It's a real honour to share a union with such fantastic activists. On behalf of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and me personally, I want to thank and congratulate Siona, Rachel and Kerry for all the work that they've done and this hugely well-deserved recognition that they've been given and to thank them for everything they continue to do for the service and for the women's members within Scotland. I joined Prospect uh, about a year and a half ago and right from the get-go um, we realised that the numbers were starting to dwindle and we needed to, to, to tackle it in a way so we can try and bring the numbers up for our SAFE branch. So when Dan and uh, D David got involved in the branch committee, they very quickly identified that there was an opportunity for membership growth. They also identified that there were pockets of membership that had gaps, um, so some particular areas um, or job tasking. Um, where the membership was not as high. We went around to key areas, especially areas that were underrepresented or had a lack of membership and rather than identifying the problems ourselves, I think we, we went on a bit of a mission to find out what the real problems were. I think when you're working within the union apparatus you can be a bit too close to the issues to, to see the wood for the trees, so to speak. So we went out and identified the key areas for improvement uh, amongst the membership and then set about plans on how we would improve that and what our win conditions were. We did a mass meeting um, where me and Dan were, were Dan being chair, me being vice chair, and we, we got everywhere on the table. And from then, it's been a steady uptick in numbers. Also, with the newer diversity stuff and also having an open desk policy, we started getting more and more people coming to speak to us, more people saying why they weren't in the union. We could go, go and speak to them and assure them that they will be, uh, the problems that they've got will be tackled and we will, will support anybody. So just made sure we're very, very visible. What they've also done is not simply concentrated on building the membership, 
they've also concentrated on making that membership active. So in addition to building the membership, they've also built up the representation base. So they've ensured that there is a rep that covers each area of the site. Um, and again, that should help to build members' engagement with their, um, with their trade union and ensure that the points that are important to them, um, the issues at work that are vital to them, are dealt with, are known about by the committee and then are taken forward to, to the management. It's a collective effort of myself and David uh, and you know all of our reps here at Recife, we've got great, really engaged, really passionate reps that work really hard. We take our union work very, very seriously and we're very, very passionate about it. My granddad was a unionist, my dad was a unionist and, and for us it's something that you have to do and we want to make sure that everybody in the Recife site is getting well represented and we've got a healthy branch. For me really this is a, more of an award for the branch than directed to an individual. And a massive thank you um, to Prospect. Now the importance of health and safety is to make sure everybody goes home safely, especially the environment that I work in. I think what makes Tony stand out is the uh, circumstances that, that uh, he deals with day in day out working for an, an employer that doesn't want to engage uh, with the trade union. Tony's perseverance determination is outstanding, he doesn't let anything drop and he has worked so hard on bringing health and safety standards that should be in the workplace to, to his workplace in North British. My contribution towards that is I actively promote health and safety in the workplace on a day-to-day -day basis with all my colleagues and peers. It is a tier two uh, coma workplace which obviously uh, creates higher risks in relation to the amount of spirit that's, uh, that's stored in these warehouses and anything I see untoward, then I'll pick up on that and uh, we'll have a chat about it. Or we have to then report certain things that we maybe don't find safe to the senior leader management team. He's done some work around the forklift trucks because they weren't up to standard uh, um, for um, moving the barrels of whiskey around this, this site. But he's been, he is involved in every sort of little element of health and safety on the site and it's it's about that constant struggle to, to bring those standards up to, to scratch on the site and that can only be done if you are committed and determined to making sure that every last element of health and safety is looked after properly. They do have a safer and healthier work environment as a result of Tony's efforts. I'd just like to congratulate Tony and his perseverance in the workplace and how he has made the workplace a better and safer environment for the future of his members. He truly deserves this award. You've certainly influenced our work because we are now going to be hopefully working with trade unions really to say that, that these regulations need to be enforced with far more commitment by the HSE uh, than has been the case in your circumstances. I feel honoured that, that somebody has went out their way and, and recognised the, the continual work that I, I strive to do. Thank you for everything that you do for your, for your members on that site and for the whole workforce. Uh, you deserve it, your determination is now being uh, uh, recognised with this, with this award. I first encountered Ross actually as a commuter myself, travelling back and forth from Port Lethen to Aberdeen. Uh, that's my regular commute, so I met Ross on the Gateline and quite often got chatting to him. And then after that, I learnt more about what he was doing on our union learning programme, supported by the Scottish Union Learning Funding. Scottish Union Learning helped by, if I've got any questions or worried or concerned about the subject I'm doing that day, I could go and back to them. They are very helpful. If you need them, they're there. The training that he's had and the development he's had is, uh, is very, very important to, to both, both uh, organisations. But I think to Ross it's very important because he feels he's been invested in, he's been supported. He's had both ScotRail and RMT working together to support his personal development. Where Ross is now, 
is at a very advanced, a very advanced stage in, in his learning journey. They've been really supportive in the learning and um, I couldn't have done it without RMT. The employer and the RMT have worked very collaboratively and very well together on this to make sure that Ross has got the right course and the right progression and the difference in Ross in the last three or four years has been absolutely amazing. He's so confident now when he speaks to the passengers and they come through the gate line. I'm sure that he's going to go much further going forward and I think it's an opportunity for us to really showcase this and what the union can do for our members. He's really uh, pleased he's had that support. He's really conscious that that's something quite special and, uh, and I think that's uh, all credit to Ross for taking that training development SVQ studying which obviously he's passed all of his exams he was very proud to tell me that but also the fact that actually he's embraced the learnings and put them into practice. He doesn't realise how much hard work he's put into this that the feedback I've got from the, the, the university lecturers and tutors is that he's, he's, putting, he's putting a hard shift in to get his result. Therefore I just say to Ross well done and fully deserved to be the recipient of this award. I feel really good and I can't believe I've done it, but that just showed the work you put in really does help. I think John's very deserving of being the recipient of this award because for so many years he's dedicated himself and committed himself to being a very strong union activist within the workplace and has a very keen sense of learning and providing others with opportunities and developments. We use a number of different ways to get out and speak to workers throughout the workplace. We have desk-based people, engineers in the field, uh, we use social media, email, text messages, um, WhatsApp groups, word of mouth and sometimes small events in key locations where it just generates that conversation and then comes one-to-one -one contact to say, I'd like to do this. It could be a structured course or you, know, you then suddenly find there's a pocket of people that, that, that are interested in the subject. Union learning is very important because I get um, funding to the, our union to get quarters won because a lot of members wouldn't be going on quarters otherwise. It's building that close-knit community where we would buddy people up in, in courses and get the feedback from previous courses and then go back and have a look at it and say what is working, what's not. So during COVID we moved everything online, we lost our body system where people in the classroom so we built WhatsApp groups and the amount of activity that's in there is you know I'm stuck, can anyone help me with that? Here's a phone number, can someone check this? And it was just that um, that community led or that, that, that workplace development um, is, is that they all got together and said, I'm going to help each other out. I think John deserved this award because he's basically been an inspirational for ULR and built confidence for learners to go into court, which they would not otherwise do. A lot of things are changing where we're seeing jobs being offshored, we're seeing complex roles change, AI is coming forward, there's transformation, there's different efficiencies. So union-led workforce development is important, uh, especially in the telecom sector. I think we've seen people flourish in a way that they don't in the workplace because they have the confidence and the encouragement from someone like John in that role to believe in themselves that they could be more than just doing their day-to-day -day role.